What is up, everyone? It is your man on fire mentor, David Mailer, and welcome to today's teaching where we are going to dive right into the center of the fire with a very special guest that we have today. And he's special in that he is not only one of my best friends in the world, but he is a senior coach on the Man on Fire team. His name is Kai Van Bodhi, and how I would describe him, if he wasn't listening, would be a man that has more integrity than anybody I know, somebody that I trust implicitly from the bottom of my heart, somebody who has a beautiful balance between his masculine and his feminine energy, someone that I feel safe around, my physiology just softens. I don't know someone that is more empathetic, more compassionate, and has a bigger heart than my friend, Kai Van Bodhi. Kai, thank you for joining us today. And I know you have a very, very, very special topic that you're going to be teaching the guys. And at the end, you're going to even extend an invitation for how they can go deeper. And today's topic is how to harness your sexual energy so you can thrive in all areas of your life. And this is an absolute topic that men need to get present to. Kai, welcome. Thank you, David. It's always a pleasure to get introduced by you. And uh, I have a lot of the same feelings toward you, the safety you bring, the fierce presence you bring, the playfulness. And I'm excited today to bring this to the men who are listening because sexuality is a topic that can be so misunderstood, so misused. Um, and I'm going to go into some of the reasons why uh, we've unfortunately gotten some pretty poor programming and how that can cost us our marriage, cost us success in our business, cost us living with shame and guilt, not even fully enjoying our sexual experiences, but rather feeling like we have to hide things. Um, and so I'm, I'm, it's, it's a very important topic. And, and for the men that are listening, I encourage you to have your headphones, have privacy, give yourself the safety to really take this in because this isn't a superficial level transmission. We're going to go deep to the root cause of some things that you might recognize that are costing you in your life. And you might be able to see another pathway forward af after this presentation today. Beautiful. And, and I'm excited to have you uh, speaking on this topic, Kai, because between myself and you, we have over 30 years experience, not just in the transformational space and the world of healing, but primarily working with men. And really bringing them into a place of safety, of coming into full ownership of their energy and being able to emanate that in an authentic way back into their life. So without any further ado, I'm going to have you jump right in and start sharing your gift. Awesome. Thank you, David. Um, before I go into the slides, uh, I just want to say that just like we've been sold on foods and a diet that normally doesn't serve us, just like we've learned to settle for less than the, the highest intimacy that's possible in our relationships. Uh, we've also been sold on a lot of addictions, especially around sexuality, because it's such an easy way to tap in to our nervous system and our physiology. So I really encourage you as we get to going to these slides to take some deep breaths, to really consider your relationship to your sexuality, to masturbation, to porn. How would you rate the quality of your sex life with your partner or in your marriage? And what would you want if anything was possible? And so I, I, wanna, I want you to start from where you are in this relationship. And before I dive in, uh, many years ago, I chose to leave the United States and go to China to study martial arts and meditation and medicine. Um, I, I was very naive and young, and I, I had this dream of studying with masters. And uh, when I got there, one of the biggest pieces of work, no matter what teacher I was studying with, whether they were a doctor in the hospital or a meditation teacher or a martial arts teacher, it was very common for them to instruct us that a portion of the year for 30 days or 90 days or whatever period it was, that we were not to leak our essence. We were not to ejaculate. And that was a requirement for the physical training because there was a belief in that culture that when you conserve that energy, like Muhammad Ali would say, he would never uh, lose his seed 40, 50, 100 days before a match, that that energy could be circulated up into the heart, into the brain, into the movements, into healing the body. And so I got a very 
uh, powerful initiation into this from my martial arts and medicine teachers. And I was lucky enough to be surrounded by a, a group of other men who were doing the same thing, coming up against our addictions and overcoming it. So just paying that gratitude back to my teachers who passed this on to me. Don't worry. We're not going to go much into Eastern philosophy or mysticism. We're going to stay in the science and the research today. So with that said, here we go. And Kai, but before you officially dive in, I just want to make sure that everyone really understands what we're talking about today. When, when we say harness your sexual energy, we all know that uh, there are men out there that have harmed a lot of people. There are men that have uh, raped. There are men that have even taken advantage of their wife or their ex-wife and really miss the mark on not being able to properly use their energy in a way where their partner felt deeply respected, deeply nourished, deeply seen. And this is a power that we possess. And with any power, it could be utilized towards creation and towards good, or it could be utilized towards harm. And I want to make sure that the guys understand, you know, as they're about to receive your presentation that we're talking about harnessing a power that is a God-given right for us to have this power. However, many men have never really learned how to have a healthy relationship with this power and unfortunately have hurt a lot of people in the process, not just themselves, but others. Yeah, thank you, David. How to harness your sexual energy so you can thrive in all areas of your life. And really, if you've been around Man on Fire, or even if it's your first time, one of the things that makes this work and this brotherhood so powerful is that that David teaches us to not run away from the emotions that we've had our whole life that are uncomfortable. And in fact, it's running away from frustration, from anger, from fear, from unworthiness that causes us to escape into numbing behaviors or overcompensation or whatever it is. And the magic that I've seen over and over in this brotherhood, if you hang around us enough, is we really do learn how to feel those emotions so that in seconds to minutes, they can turn into uh, liberated energy, insight, levity, healing energy for the body. And so with that being one of the principles of Man on Fire that drives uh, the power of our brotherhood, that we, uh, we have the courage to feel those things, it's no different with our sexual energy. We've got to get in touch with any guilt, shame, fear, uh, uncomfortableness, or unworthiness that we inherited. And so that first step will be about feeling uh, what we've inherited as men. Uh, think back to your childhood experiences around sex. What were the messages you got from your school, from your parents, uh, from your church, from your early sexual experiences? These are, unless you've done the work, these early experiences will continue to color your life and the way that you operate in this arena, and usually not for the better. The, the next step is around sealing. Once we know where our leaks are energetically, we want to be able to seal those leaks and circulate that energy upward. And we have a multitude of practices in the brotherhood that allow us to take that life force that gets liberated by feeling our emotions fully and bringing it into the heart bringing it up into the mind, bringing it out into our body to get in better shape, or we can bring it into our lovemaking. And so that's really beautiful. And finally, this is how we're going to heal. When we stop leaking our energy, be it sexually, be it to porn and masturbation, to uh, Facebook, social media, drugs and alcohol, whatever it is, no judgment, but it's a leak. And our body can't heal when we're like a, a bucket with a big hole in the bottom, no matter how much personal development we do. No matter how many things we try to pour in the bucket, if there's a big leak in the bottom, it's going to be really hard to get leverage in your life. So I like to remember, feel, seal, and heal. So let's let's dive in. All right. So you may know this already. You may not. You may fit into these statistics, or you may know loved ones you really care about that fit into these statistics. Despite the technology and the amount of information available through Google and through YouTube, and the amount of nutrition and the, the availability of food, despite all of that, we are the most overweight, medicated, addicted, and in-debt group of Americans in, in the history of the United States. And so what is going on that we have all this information and all this abundance, and yet we're by and large heading in the wrong direction with our health, 
and our freedom from these these different things. And the the reality is, if you see this woman over here on the right with courage written on her her chest, her name is Brene Brown. Uh, she does incredible work, and she talks about that the main cause of this phenomenon is our shame. That as men, and this includes our sexuality, we don't have a wise person to talk to to share our vulnerability. Maybe we feel like we can't perform in the bedroom. Maybe we reach ejaculation too quickly. Maybe we have an amazing wife, but we have a secret life with porn and, and, and massage parlors, whatever it is. We've got this shame around it and it keeps us locked in these patterns where we can't seem to get out. And the more we feel shame, the less we'll connect with the people in our lives on a truly intimate level. And no matter how good we are at hiding it, eventually it will catch up with us as a health problem, as a divorce, as something from the external world. So this is the beginning of, of learning how to feel those emotions so that we can move through them. So we can have the courage to have a brotherhood like man on fire or to have a coach in your life um, or to have a therapist, whatever it may be, somewhere in your world where you can be fully honest and vulnerable. That's the first step. And maybe you showing up here today, you're going to feel the safety of this environment right here, right now. And so let's get specific because this is about sexual energy. Where does the shame around sexual energy come from? Well, I can remember sitting in a class and my professor who was a chiropractor like, like David no, knew the physical body really well. Uh, he said that one of the reasons that men have a lot of issues around sexual energy is because most of us discovered pornography as a young teenager. And we would often, with no conversation with our father or our mothers or our health teacher, we would discover masturbation on our own. And then we would have to hide in the bathroom, in the shower, in the closet, wherever it was. And so every time we engaged our sexual energy with ourselves, there was fear, there was anxiety. There was shame and guilt right from the beginning. What would happen if your sister caught you, if your mom caught you? This is a really common experience and movies make fun of it. But unfortunately, this begins through no fault of our own, the association of sexuality with shame and guilt and fear. And it also it also begins the, the journey into having issues with how we get aroused around women and being able to respect them and being able to really feel and cultivate this incredible gift that is sexual energy. I mean, it's so powerful. It motivates us to such a deep level from procreation to just the pure uh, desire that we have for the beauty of a woman. And it's, it's so easy to be misused because of movies, pornography, and early childhood experiences. So, so how does this mask that we wear show up if we don't face and feel, if we don't lean into personal development, if we don't really find our balls and get some courage to have the support we deserve. My observation is that far and wide, and I think David would agree with this, that these factors right here, masturbation and porn, alcohol, sugar, caffeine, and cannabis are encompass the majority of what takes the potent energy and courage from some of our best men when they use these things to cover up their true vulnerability, when they don't have a place where they feel safe, when they don't have any other better tool to manage their stress or their loneliness, we turn to these things. And it is societally so acceptable to turn to these things. Not only that, but with sex and with sugar, which is a form of food, uh, these, these are things that from an evolutionary perspective, our ancestors for, for hundreds of thousands of years were programmed to survive by going toward sex, toward, toward spreading their seed. We were, uh, we were programmed to eat the sweet food because it was the one that was the least poisonous when we were hunter-gatherers. But now with the availability of porn, with the availability of carbohydrates and sugar is in everything, alcohol being a form of sugar, now that biological tendency to crave it is the source of our diabetes, of our being overweight, of our addiction. And we really, it's going to require us as men, brothers, I'm speaking right into your heart, it's going to require you to have some courage to seal these leaks and these addictions. 
And the best way to do that is to have brotherhood, have accountability, have places that you can train this kind of stuff so that there's a group of you all doing the same thing and you become the new culture rather than trying to swim upstream against the culture that you're imbued in already. I don't, I wouldn't be where I was without those groups of men and those teachers that I trained with day in and day out in Asia. I wouldn't be where I was, uh, where I am now. We, we need support. We need accountability to do this kind of stuff. So let's, let's go a little deeper. And we know that when someone watches porn with regularity, their brain actually starts to change. And the brain of someone who uses porn regularly is going to look like the brain of a heroin addict. It's unfortunately the same is true with sugar. The, train, the same is true with binge watching uh, on streaming services. And the same is true with social media. When you have that uncontrollable desire to go in and to stay longer and longer and longer and get that dopamine hit, eventually the brain literally starts to change and we get a reduction in gray matter. That means you will be a man who has less willpower, less staying power, less courage, because your the, the pathway to these addictive practices has become pavemented. It, it started out as a path through the jungle with a machete, and then pretty soon there was a dirt path. And at this point, when the brain changes, you put concrete down. And now the brain is going to go there more easily. And again, while it is your responsibility, and we're going to give you some powerful tools even today at the end of this first segment, uh, it, it isn't your fault. I mean, this is... The world is spending the majority of its money and intelligence through social media like YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all those things. They have mined our attention, and now the consumer will buy that attention from those big services. That's the new energy. That's the new energy. And so if we can't command our focus, we're going to have a really tough time. So what else do we know about people who use porn regularly? And you could substitute social media. You could substitute being addicted to uh, low-level entertainment, all of these things. You're going to have more depression. You're going to feel more anxiety. You're going to be more susceptible to stress. And you're going to start to have social malfunctioning, meaning there's going to be fallout in your relationships. You're going to have difficulty navigating your relationships. And it'll be next to impossible to navigate into leadership and work so you can make more money and have more impact. It'll be next to impossible if your relationship is challenged or your marriage is has got a vacuum of intimacy w without this energy and with the brain pre-wired like this, it's going to be very difficult and near impossible to get yourself back on track. So don't worry, we're going to give you a tool today, but just be real with yourself about even the small ways that these things are starting to show up in your life. Now, this is the last part on on porn specifically, because I just want you to be educated about this. There's a, a phenomenal book called Your Brain on Porn. And sometimes knowing the science actually will yield more willpower and more conviction if you're willing to put in the time to listen to this book. But dopamine, our reward chemical, while, when we're watching pornography alone and masturbating, is 200% higher than when we're with our wife or our girlfriend or the person that we love the most. And so the reality is when you use pornography on with any regularity, the reward of being with, a, with your actual woman will never compete. And on one level or another, unconsciously or consciously, your wife or your partner will feel that they're not quite enough. And more importantly, when sex is withdrawn from a relationship, which which maybe some of you can relate to that, where sex isn't on the table or it's very infrequent or it's transactional. Um, and you can go get that same dopamine hit. In fact, you know, double the dopamine hit from the porn. You're not going to be motivated to work on your marriage. You, you won't have the, the chemicals of motivation to do it. So you're going to end up divorce after divorce after divorce. It's going to be the same thing until you stop using this drug. And there's no judgment in that, it's just the science of it. And again, as we talked about before, you you when you're really ejaculating too much, even in a healthy relationship, you start to feel brain fog. You start to feel like you just don't care as much. It's almost like you can't afford to care as much like when you're tired and your motivation fades. Because the reality is and we'll go into more of this in segment 2, the 
energy in your ejaculation in that fluid it is you know one drop of your seminal fluid is equal to 100 drops of blood in terms of the minerals and the nutrients you've got to understand any fluid that comes out of your body when it goes out into a petri dish or onto the floor it's just there on the floor but your semen has motive force it literally is swimming and trying to get to a goal and so your body will beg, borrow, and steal nutrients and hormones and all these other building blocks of health. It will steal that to make sure you have you have uh, seed available because that's our evolutionary biology in action. We we are pre-programmed to always be available to inseminate to make to make new life. And while that's a beautiful thing and a powerful thing, if it's misused, it becomes infidelity. It becomes these addictions. So what can you do about it? Well, first of all, why would you want to do this? Well, there's a huge phenomenon called NOFAP, meaning no masturbation. And it blew up a couple of years ago, probably six, seven years ago now on Reddit, on one of these internet forums. And I'm only mentioning Reddit because Reddit is a huge source. It's not regulated. It's not controlled, but it's a huge source of empirical data where groups of people are trying things out they're giving up alcohol they're giving up masturbation and porn and they're commenting on what they're experiencing to the level where it's it's hundreds of thousands of people that have gone off porn for periods that range from 30 days all the way past a year these are the common observations from people that have joined the no fat movement meaning no masturbation for at least 30 days and it goes these benefits continue to increase all the way past a year Higher internal motivation, reduced attraction to distractions, more fun and pleasure in actual sex, right? Those dopamine levels come back up, better focus and increased attention span, more confidence and improved self-image. There's also more willpower to work out, increased willpower and self-discipline, higher libido, a constant urge for self-improvement. When you're not leaking that sexual energy that creates life, you want to create a better version of yourself and reduced anxiety and stress. So just think about for a moment, where in your life would some of these things be really powerful for you? And what, uh, what would, it, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, like, especially like in relationship to number three and number eight, because you and I have worked with so many men, it's very common um for them to say that their wife if not them feels like the sex is chore like it's mechanical um there's apathy meaning there's no emotion they're just going through the motions uh, we did it to get it over with and sadly uh, more often than not we will even hear the woman say i almost felt as if i was being raped and this is in relationship you know to a man that that pleasures himself and he's getting that dopamine hit, if he were to be able to develop the skill set, which you're going to give us a tool of how to do that, if he were to be able to give that up and conserve that energy, conserve that chi, and harness his power, it grows his libido, and it allows uh, for more fun and pleasure in sex because you're more emotionally and spiritually connected to your partner. And she can feel that as opposed to feeling like, where is he right now? Is he just using me to ejaculate, to, to come? And that's, that's very painful for a woman to endure. It's also painful for the man to wake up when that actually is happening. He might not be aware of it. So for some of you right now, you might be hearing this for the first time. We, we have enormous empathy and compassion if, if this is something that's brand new for you to hear. And so as David is saying, the cost of not knowing this, it can be really high for your partner and for yourself, the pain of waking up to it. And I'm also inviting you to see that the cultivation of this energy can yield rewards that feel like your life is completely on fire. And so it's important in my work, in the way that I motivate myself to see the cost and feel that cost, but also to see what's possible if I were to get a handle on this so that it pulls me forward into my vision. So, so what does it require to get a handle on this? Well, we want to be able to train our sexual energy and move it up from our genitals to our heart, to our mind. I mean, the first thing that I noticed just to be completely real about this is once I started learning how to retain 
And we're not going to get too far into this today, but we'll talk a little bit about it because the highest level or the highest level that I know of is where as a man, you can have what feels like an orgasm, but nothing is leaked out of your body. Now, this requires practice. It requires training, but I promise you it's 100% real. And whether you, 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 you want, if you have a beautiful sexual relationship, uh, depending on who your partner is, you may want to be able to make love to them three, four times a week, but you may only ejaculate every other week or every five or six days because you notice if you ejaculate more than that, you do feel depleted. You do feel tired. It's not, a, but it's not about limiting your sexual pleasure. In fact, you can get to a place where those internal orgasms are full body. And they're healing and they're spreading the blood all around the body so that it circulates and your heart's coming online. And the last part, which is what I was starting to, to allude to, is you will desire your woman in a way that you, will, you can't sustain when you're ejaculating every time. You will want her. And by want her, I don't just mean sexually. I mean, you're going to want to listen to her. You're going to want to be patient with her when she's in her feminine storm. You're going to have those access to those higher neurotransmitters that open compassion that allow you to listen with a new a new hearing to them and without that so source of your most you know most valuable neurotransmitters these chemicals that are underneath our emotions and the way our brain functions without that it it's a it's a very difficult road to reclaim a marriage so th this can really be a force multiplier so today in our first segment we're just going to look at how to control our focus, and then we're going to do a specific breathing technique called the MBA that we do in our brotherhood. We're not going to explain much. We're going to let you have an experience of it, and then we're going to go back into the meditation, and for most of you, you're going to have a different experience of focus and stillness because this is the beginning of being able to control our sexual energy without controlling our focus. We're not going to be able to control our sexual energy because it's like a fire hose down there. It is so strong and powerful. So we've got to start with focusing on something simpler, something less uh, with less polarity and less energy, which is going to be our breath. So we're going to shift now into that. All right. So go ahead and find a comfortable seat. David, do you want to say anything before I transition into the practice? Yeah, thank you. There's one thing that I, I don't want uh, to lose sight of, which you mentioned, which is I consider it to be super important. You know, some of us may have heard uh, a joke, you know, where God is like, I, you know, I have, I have good news and bad news. And, well, what's the good news? Well, the good news is I'm going to give you um, a penis and, um, and I'm going to give you a brain. Well, what, what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is you could only use one of those at a time. And, you know, it, it sounds playfully humorous, but the reality is, and, and it speaks to what you're really speaking about, which is, if we don't learn to bring the energy up from our genitals through the heart, the reality is the decision-making process of our mind is coming from a place that's unhealthy. It's coming from a place of addiction. It's coming from a place where we are now using sex or using someone as an object rather than having that energy come up and filter through our heart where our decision-making process is coming from a very pure and clean place. And you know, many men that we've worked with, Kai, they never really learned or were taught, oh my God, I didn't know that I could bring this energy up. I didn't know that it it doesn't just stay down in that area because so many guys want to just get rid of that tension, want to get rid of that that feeling down there. And, and just they get that quick hit of the dopamine, but they don't realize a thousandfold to that feeling is if you actually learn to run the energy up. Because then by the time it makes it to your mind, it first circulated through the heart. And that's where all the purity is. And then you can't harm yourself or you can't harm another person if that energy went through your heart. So I'm excited that you're going to at least teach the infancy stages of a practice. Beautiful. Yeah. And I want to just tone set that uh, whether you call it meditation, whether you call it training your attention span, whether you call it developing your focus, accessing flow state, whatever we're going to call this practice, I just want you to know that if it's difficult, that doesn't mean you're not doing it right. And for some of you, it's going to be comfortable and easy. And for some of you, you're going to realize when you stop doing all the external things, you're going to get a really good read on the quality of your mind that we in Man on Fire sometimes say we teach and we work with a lot that in our mind, there are pirates, there are, there are 
there are parts of our thought process that hijack and take us to places in our life where we would never consciously want to go. And then there's another voice that we can learn to listen to that we train in this brotherhood, the voice of our higher self or our best self. We we learn how to listen to that voice. That's that's also there. It's like the angel and the devil, you know. One is our conditioning and one is the voice that we begin to choose for ourselves where we're really connected. And so just know, however difficult the first three, three four minutes is, that's all it's going to be. We're going to do a breathwork technique, and then we're going to go back into that, and you're going to see a difference because this breathwork is specifically designed to bring us out of the parts of our brain that tend to hijack us into the higher aspects of ourself and to quiet our thoughts. And that, that's the beauty of, of masculine men's work and teaching is that w- we don't just feel our way. We have techniques. We have skills that work, that if you apply them and you train them, they work no matter what. On a good day, on a bad day, as long as you do it, you will get a result. And I love that about this work. It's skill-based, um, but it requires the heart. It requires sincerity. It requires you right now to find your seat, to shut out the external distractions, and we're going to turn the music on. All right, here we go. So sitting or laying, preferably sitting, closing the other browsers or tabs, bring your thumb and index finger to touch and place those hands on your lap, facing straight down. Your middle ring and pinky finger will extend slightly over the edge of the knee. And you can gently pull and sit up tall, really elongate your spine like balancing a book on the crown of your head. Feel your feet on the floor. And then close your eyes if you're in a safe place to do so. Let the tongue touch the roof of the mouth somewhere. It's comfortable, connecting the heart to the brain. And then allow your body to become completely still. We can control our our heart rate and we can control our brain waves by controlling our physiology, our posture. It's one of the great entry points to changing our state, showing up differently. All right, step two, we're going to control our breath. So bring all the focus of your breath right under your nose. And breathing in, just notice that you're breathing in. And breathing out, you can feel the breath exiting the nostrils. Maybe you feel it on the upper lip, uh, a warmth or a moisture. And of all the places your mind could go, keep your body completely still and just focus on the breath right under the nose. Allow the breath to be slow, deep, silent. Just notice where your mind is right now. And if it's wandered, just like training a little puppy dog or a, a innocent child, just bring the mind back and tell it to stay, stay right there under the nose. Go ahead and relax your jaw. Relax the muscles around and behind the eyes. Relax the forehead. These are places where the nervous system broadcasts tension. And we can influence the nervous system by relaxing them. As we come to the final minute of the meditation, just coming back to that one square inch under your nose.
And wherever your mind is, bring it back 30 more seconds. Start again. Body still, mind focused on that one square inch. Slowly open your eyes and come on back and just notice how easy was it to focus in that one spot? Because if we're going to control that sexual energy, we got to be able to focus on where that energy is and to move it up. And that's what we'll cover in the next segment. But now we're just going to do a very powerful breathing technique. We'll keep it as simple as possible. And we'll go back to another minute or two of meditation. Just bring your hands together, palm connected to palm. And take the base of your thumbs and bring it right against the center of the chest. Keep your eyes open. There'll be a movement where we're gonna we're gonna move open like this, shoulders back and down, lift the chin, and then we're gonna close with fists, like doing a cannonball into the pool. And you're gonna feel the the spine flexing and extending right around the heart and lungs. So it's open and close, cannonball from the side, open and close. And then the breath is simple. We inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. In nose out through the mouth and then the last breath will hold and we're going to exhale through the tiniest opening in your lips like air leaking from a tire and so once you take that last breath sip through the mouth and then you're going to exhale like this like exhaling through a coffee straw slow and quiet as you can and that that slow exhale is what brings the energy up to the brain and to the fingertips and to the toes. And it really helps your mind quiet itself down. So here we go. Hands together, bowing the head, remembering how that meditation was for you, how easy or difficult, how present or distracted you were, how still or fidgety you were. One, Just feeling your hands touching, feeling the base of the thumbs touching the chest. Two, breathe in through the nose and hold it in this posture. Three, blow all the air out your mouth and relax, keeping your hands together. All right, inhale, open the hands, inhale through the nose. Exhale, mouth. Inhale like a morning stretch. Exhale, mouth like a cannonball. All the way in all the way out in through the nose out through the mouth five slow it down four three two last one inhale hold both hands flat on the heart sit up tall once again blow all your air out chin to chest exhale through the mouth relax every muscle in your body Pause in the emptiness, navels all the way back to spine, and then one more big, powerful inhale and hold at the top with a straight spine. Take a sip through the mouth. Swallow it down, relax your shoulders. Now open the lips and exhale as quietly and slowly as you can, like through a pinhole. And when there's no air left to exhale, just breathe into the center of your chest where the palms are flat. Bring your hands into the meditation posture, thumb and index finger touching. And put them palms down on the top of the knee, middle ring and pinky finger extending over the edge. Sit up tall. We're going to come back into one, one minute or so. And bring all your focus right there under your nose again. Whole body relax, spine long. And the breath is slow, deep, and quiet. And see how focused you can be on that one spot under the nose. Keep 
your body completely still. And slowly come back to presence. You can rub your hands together and place your palms cupped over your eyes. Cup your palms over your eyes and just blink your eyes open in the darkness that's underneath. And then go ahead and just sweep down your face and shake it out a little bit. Come on back. Now, what what many of you will have noticed is that, and you won't need me to be telling you this, you'll already know that the portion of the meditation after the breath that your mind will have been calmer stiller and it's because we there are methods to breathe to bring blood flow to different parts of the body to heal uh, to bring blood flow to the genitals to be better lovers and to also bring the energy from the genitals up into the heart it's just a matter like lifting weights it's our imagination our focus and our breathing, and then there's some control of these muscles that we often don't use in regular life. And so uh, in our next uh, segment of this, we're going to cover the breathing practice that really is the beginning of being able to pull sexual energy up into the heart and up into the brain, and we'll have an experience of that. But with that said, um, I want to invite you, if this is really landing for you, or if you know uh, that this is the year that you really want to take on your focus so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. If you know what you're currently doing isn't working, whether it's in your relationship, uh, in your marriage, in your in your work, or in your health, um, we have an opportunity to come train together uh, with me uh, in an event where we're going to learn how to powerfully uh, master our sexual energy to be better lovers. We're going to learn how to use breathing techniques in our morning and evening routines to take out the stress of the day. Uh, in a, in a, in a powerful, skillful way, we're going to learn how to show up at our best, no matter what's going on around us, so that you can make this coming year the best year of your life. Um, no matter no matter what area it, it is that you want to use that, but especially getting a handle on that sexual energy so you can harness it for whatever it is you want. And there's going to be uh, so much time to practice and to train and to go deep. And so, if you are interested in that, if you want to hear about that opportunity, there's a limited number uh, of seats in this in this live event. There's a link, and you can click on that link, and you can have a conversation with one of our team about whether or not that program's a fit for you. Um, it's it's not just an event. There'll be calls leading up to it, group calls with powerful breathing practices to prepare you, but also videos that you'll be able to go back to. And there will be two group calls after the event. So it's almost like a a month and a half long experience with an event in the middle. Um, I'm so excited to train with the men who feel called um, because this has been probably the single most powerful set of tools that I've learned in my life um, to, to be where I'm at. And so would love to have you come train with us. And Kai, I attended your event last year to continue to sharpen my own sword, right? When you're the leader in a, of, of men, it's important that you are um, humble enough and continue to want to evolve and grow. And you've been one of the go-to trusted leaders, somebody that I continue to learn from, as I know that you would say the same about myself. And um, maybe I haven't shared this with you, but, you know, in the year's time that has passed, it's almost a year, I believe the event might have been last January. uh, It's very fair and honest of me to say that it's been the absolute best year of my life in terms of harnessing my sexual energy, um, cultivation and depth of intimacy with my wife, more passion, more playfulness, and just overall containment of my own power that I have been able to put into my very mission and purpose. So uh, it's for the guys that really uh, are ready to make that level of commitment. As Kai shared, it's a um, very limited uh, amount of seats available. This is a live in-person four-day event. I'll be there. Some of the men on the Man of Fire team will be there while Kai is leading this. And There'll be a lot of sacred rituals that he'll be teaching us. As Kai had shared earlier, he studied in the Orient for over seven years and has really harnessed um, the use of energy 
and how to really allow that to serve you in a way of being a man that has more passion, more power, more purpose in his life. So if you're somebody that knows that the time is now and uh, you're ready to sharpen your sword, you're ready to for that level of commitment to your growth, to your transformation, so you can show up more powerfully, not just for yourself, but for the people in your life that you truly care about and love, from your wife to your children, then I would recommend that you click the link that will be below and you'll have a conversation with one of the coaches on our team and the two of you will flush out whether or not you are sincere and genuine about your growth and if this is the right program for you at this point in time. And there will be a second a second module for these guys to have. We're going to have another live for them to uh, be a part of. Yeah, thank you, David. Yeah, and, and you know, we started the conversation talking about how how is it that we have all this information, all this nutrition, and yet we're, you know, we're overweight and we're in debt and we're over medicated? Well, one of the one of the ways that this event and even the calls leading up and the calls after they are going to be experiential, so that you're you're going to experience a version of yourself that has more energy and more clarity and more focus, so that it will be difficult to go back into your ways of forgetting. The world will pull at you when you go home, but because you've had an experience, not just the information, but the physical experience of what it can be like, it'll make it very difficult to go back and you'll have the practices to carry you forward. So thanks, David. Kai, thank you for giving us some of your gifts. And I look forward to seeing you on the next part of this series. Talk to you soon, brother. Yeah. Thank you, David. See you on the other side.